are you doing? I never ever ever film at night so this feels really special today i'm gonna be filming one of my favorite videos of the year which is giving you some spooky book recommendations i do a video like this every year every year they're different books so if you want to check out last year's couple they'll be up here hopefully these are some recommendations you haven't heard of or you haven't read Kelsper is currently in the front room disemboweling my enemy, so please just ignore him. If you are bored, you're bored of going to Transylvania. You don't want to go to Transylvania anymore. You're over Transylvania. You have the t-shirt that says, been to Transylvania, got the t-shirt. You've read Dracula one too many times, or you just don't want to read Dracula. You want some new vampire material in your life. This is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, or Saint Gibson. Can I call you a saint? I think I can. Holy moly. The moly is holy. A Dowry of Blood was one of the first books that I read this year and it was so good. So good. It has of course all of the elements and it is itself a reimagining of Dracula by Bram Stoker in that we follow Dracula but this is a reimagining focusing on Dracula's brides because this book is written through letters and those letters are written by a woman named Constanta who is Dracula's like first bride and you follow them throughout the years. This book captures really really well the feeling of stretching something far longer than it needs to be stretched, namely a life, their lives, um, and stretching an abusive relationship at that through centuries, through eons, through time that just becomes this muddy river of grief and abuse and suffering because the relationship starts out between Dracula and Constanta. He rescues Constanta from the battlefield. At first they're quite happy, they're living their lives, but slowly things start to unravel and the vampire starts to want to bring on more and more wives and so you kind of follow the house and the ugly happenings of everything that happens in Constanta's life. Every character is so interesting. The writing, I would say read this for the writing alone. Absolutely gorgeous. So flowery without ever overdoing it. I think it really really complements the story that she is telling and page one begins with Constanta being like, I want you to read my letters and tell me if I was justified in killing my husband. I dog-eared so many pages. This one, just to give you a little a drop of blood, a taste. You did not let me keep my name, so I will strip you of yours. In this world, you are what I say you are. And I say you are a ghost, a long night's fever dream that I have finally woken up from. I say you are the smoke wisp memory of a flame, thawing ice, suffering under an early spring sun, a chalk ledger of doubts being wiped clean. I say you do not have a name. I literally just want to read this again so much. Also, this was a gift. This was a gift from one of you guys. This is from Morgan. Thank you. Thank you beyond words. I hope you pick this up at any point in your life. So good. The next book I want to recommend is extremely disturbing, which more often than not ends up being my absolute favorite kind of books. I just recently read this book. I cannot stop thinking about it. It's one of those ones that you're going to return to obsessively. This book is also said to have a really ominous curse on it that is not true, um, but there's a lot circulating this book. The author wrote on the first page that the printing of this book is banned in um, the country- uh, it wasn't even printed in that country, in his country of origin because he knew as soon as he put it out into the world it would be banned. So the fact that it already comes pre-banned from the author is incredibly interesting. Anyway, that is The Blind Owl. This book is so terrifying. This is also one that is extremely challenging to read. It's a very hard book to get through. There is a lot going on. This book is split into two, okay? So the first part, we have this man narrating. We know he's very sick. He doesn't really sleep. He takes a lot of opium. Um, he does a lot of opium, takes a lot of opium. I'm not really familiar with the vernacular of opium usage. Who knows? It's kind of like this fever dream where symbols are repeated. Um, it, it reminds me of those reoccurring dreams you have. I have a reoccurring dream that I have every time I have a fever. That is the most terrifying dream I've ever had, even though it is absolutely this abstract land of literal geometric symbols. And if I tried to explain it to you and like the meaning of shapes that each shape takes on um, and that my fever cooked brain has cooked up in the oven for me, it would not make any sense and it would not sound scary at all, but to me, the dreamer having that fever nightmare, it is to date still the scariest dream I will ever have and I dread having it. That's kind of what the first half of this book 
reads like to me because there is that shuffling of symbols, that reoccurring pattern of images. And this identity that our narrator becomes obsessed with, he finds a woman who comes into his house and he's been obsessed with her for a really long time and it turns out that she may or may not be dead or that he may or may not have murdered her himself. We don't really know and so we follow this weird wacky narrative but all then all of a sudden is split down the middle and we have like a more realistic tale of this man's actual life married to his actual wife who has a lot of similarities to the woman in the first half as well as other characters being melded into images and symbols and signs and it's just really really frightening. Definitely made me very uncomfortable but probably one of my five star reads of this year so that is The Blind Owl. Um, good luck. Good luck to you, essentially. Come back to me. Come back to me on this one. Tell me how it's going for you. Next, one of my favorite books of all time. I read this last October and this is like a book I've been waiting my whole life for. It's The Bloody Chamber. Oh my god. The Bloody Chamber. Oh my god. The Bloody Chamber. My uterus. <laughs> Don't put that in. Um, or do put that in. And the stigma. Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter is a collection of fairy tales that she has retold in the gothic tradition and when I tell you that this is everything you've been searching for, it was everything I was searching for in my own life at least, but the writing in this is it's so goddamn sexy. Like I cannot tell you how sexy this book is. The writing particularly, I'm kind of just talking about the writing because the fairy tales are very like Angela Carter is definitely bringing to the table what is wrong with a lot of fairy tales and she's not she's not going for the Disney version, okay? This is not the Disney version, this is the original fairy tale, very grotesque, very eerie, lots of consequences, lots of death, lots of murder, um, lots of assault, so just be aware of that, but this was phenomenal. My favorite was definitely the title, the title of the collection, because The Bloody Chamber is a retelling of Bluebeard. It is just exquisite. It feels like the oldest wine in the world has just been served to you on like a cold winter's night when you're wrapped in furs and diamonds and pearls. You're at like a cafe at the opera and really bass boosted cello music is playing for some reason and you get a whiff of someone's perfume. That's what this feels like. It just feels like a sumptuous scrumptious little baguette of sexiness. It's a sexy baguette. That's what this book is. It is so glorious. Um, I actually want to read it again, literally right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of other retellings in here like Puss in Boots, um, Little Red Riding Hood, Beauty and the Beast. That was a really good one. Her descriptions of everything just touches my soul in ways that um, I didn't know someone's soul could be touched. I'm really hyping this book up, but I really think it deserves everything. Listen to this description of mushrooms, okay? He knows which of the frilled, blotched, rotted fungi are fit to eat. He understands their eldritch ways, how they spring up overnight in lightless places and thrive on dead things. Even the homely wood bluets that you cook like tripe with milk and onions and the egg yolk yellow chanterelle with its fan vaulting and faint scent of apricots all spring up overnight like bubbles of earth, unsustained by nature, existing in the void. And I could believe that it has been the same with him. He came alive from the desire of the woods. If I, if I could marry a piece of literature. If we're playing Smash or Pass books, Smash. Next up, we have another five-star read that I'm going to recommend to you. We have Pedro Paramo. This is so good. This is by Juan Rufo. That name is so hard for me to say. I tried my best. This is fantastic. This is a foundational piece of magical realism. Uh, it's... Oh. We're set in a town where people are ghosts, everything is a ghost, and we're following our narrator who's come to this town to get revenge on his father for abandoning him and his mother when he was a young lad. However, he uh, quickly discovers that people in the town, like he meets them, he sees them, they seem like real people, and then all of a sudden they're gone from his life. They've just left, they're kind of ghosts, they're spirits, but then he finds another person and he's like, oh my gosh, do you know this person? And they're like, yes, I do. Uh, he is kind of a ghost. And then it turns out that everyone he's talking to is a ghost and the town is a place that exists solely on memories. The town is like kind of like a horcrux. It's like a festering little place filled with souls that can't go to rest because of the awful, terrible, brutal things that happened in the town while everyone there was alive. So it's a place of whispers, it's a place of ghost images and traces where people 
don't really leave, um, but they're not really there anymore either. And we follow our narrator as things get weird. This is a book full of voices. It's just a, it's a symphony. It's an orchestra. It's a, it's a choir. That was the word I was looking for. It's a choir of voices where it's really hard to pick out who's speaking or singing at any one time and whose story belongs to who, although it is possible, um, and you do follow him into the madness of this ghost town, literally. So five stars, highly recommend, love this endlessly. Okay, if you're looking for a spooky spooky fantasy, I want to recommend Nevernight because I love Nevernight so much. I also read this for the first time last year and I'm obsessed with this fantasy. I really am. If you've not heard of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff, we follow Mia. Mia's father, um, they're living in like this ancient Rome-inspired military fantasy world. He was brutally murdered by the government and she vows that she's going to get revenge on those in power and so she takes herself off to the Red Church, which is the secret school that trains assassins and you have to pass a lot of tests. Sounds like a copy-paste of a lot of things I've read, but for some reason it just feels so new and fresh in Nevernight. I love Jay Kristoff's writing in this. I really do. It comes with so many little footnotes. Mia also has like a little shadow cat that follows her around named Mr. Kindly. Really enjoy his presence. Really wonderful all around and I just think this is so entertaining. Like this is one that I couldn't put down. This is a book that I had to fly through and I have the second one on my shelf up there so I'll probably be getting around to that rather soon but I just think this is perfect because it's quite spooky, very dark, very grim, very noir. There's a lot of really really cool um, kind of like shadow things happening in this book if you know what I'm talking about. Next I'm gonna recommend one that I really 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 want to get to this Halloween and that is Quieten or uh, Japanese Ghost Stories by Lafcadio Hearn. First of all, look at this. Right? Look at that. Second of all, it's illustrated. The whole thing is illustrated. I just think it's so cool. So this is a collection of strange tales. I believe Quieten means strange tales <laughs> in Japanese. Um, but yes, as the tale suggests, these are Japanese ghost stories collected by the historian Lafcadio Hearn and then compiled here. So we have like um, different ones about spirits or the yokai. Yes, just yes to this whole thing. It spans the supernatural spectrum from grisly accounts of revenge from beyond the grave to haunting visions of beautiful snow spirits who bring quiet death in the night. Oh, who's the snow spirit? Is it Yukiona? Is it Yukiona who's the snow spirit? Listen to this one. A samurai turned priest does battle with the floating severed heads of ravenous goblins. That sounds like stuff from Spirited Away, and I really want to see or a different, you know. Um, inspiration from Spirit Away came. So I'm gonna hopefully be getting to this. Also, this was a gift from Michael. Thank you so much. Gorgeous. Another five star read for me is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. If you're just looking for a classic, if you're looking for a classic ghost story, if you're looking for a classic ghost story with a twist, with some psychological spice in there, The Turn of the Screw is for you. This follows a governess who is sent to watch over two small children, Miles and Flora, and these kids, it's the worst babysitting gig in the world because there may or may not be ghosts, the children may or may not be pranking her. The age-old question, does does the governess see the ghosts? And if she does, yeah, turn of the screw, just gorgeous, a really, a feat, honestly a feat, such a beautiful composition as a, as a lit student, this makes me so happy. Like this book makes me so happy. This is a book that you can tangle with you can tussle with endlessly to find answers to analyze. The writing is really, really strange. Um, Henry James, I read one other of his things, but his writing in Turn and Screw adds to the whole strangeness and ambiguity of the story because it's really, really bizarre. And if you've read Turn and Screw, I think you know what I'm saying, hopefully, unless it was just me, but um, really love this. And then the last one I want to recommend to you is definitely And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie, another classic tale. It's gorgeous. Uh, is it? I think it might be. I think it is my favorite Agatha Christie to this day. It's just a classic whodunit mystery. We follow 
10 people I think who come to an island because they've all got invitations to the island and one by one they start dropping like flies. It's not a Poirot uh, story but there is obviously an investigation <laughs> taken into seeing why these people on the island are dying. So yeah, I really did like this one. I really did. Those are all of my Halloween recommendations this year. I am so excited for spooky season. Um, if you have any recommendations for me, please let me know. I will be making like a plan out the month with me reading because it's just October. Come on, it's October. There's bats. If you end up reading any of these books, please tell me if it was a good one because there's no higher compliment than someone enjoying a book that you recommended to them. So I hope you like them. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Please have a good evening or morning or day. Um, I truly hope you do. And until then, ciao.